Well, today is what is Tuesday, March 17th, and President Trump has just announced that um, he's working diligently on getting every American roughly $1,000 um, to help with the financial situation um, that the coronavirus is, is presenting to the United States. In other words, they're trying to flatten the curve by telling a lot of people not to go into work um, so that they can uh, help prevent the spread of coronavirus. Um, I'm going to be cleaning my kitchen today, and I've got some pretty harsh chemicals here that I don't plan to use to clean my kitchen, and I'll explain why I don't plan to use them. Um, maybe I should be talking from over here. I'm not sick yet. I still feel very healthy, and it's unlikely that I've got the coronavirus. Um, it is likely that I will get the coronavirus, and that's because I work in retail, and the retail store that I work at also sells food. It will be, it's considered, it can be considered a grocery store, and um, it's unlikely that anyone would say that the grocery stores need to close down, um, which means that it's very likely that I'm going to continue to work through this crisis at the grocery store um, or at the, at the retail store that I work at. Um, and that means that it's very likely that I will eventually contract the uh, coronavirus. Um, and then uh, once I've got it, they'll probably say that I need to stay home or even my physical condition will, will demand that I stay home. Um, even though we don't have enough people to keep the store running if everybody at the store gets sick. Um, I mean, we're operating on a skeleton crew before the coronavirus even came to town. so. It's hard to picture how the store will continue to operate when um, the people at the store start to get sick. But we're not at that level yet, so and it's really not my, I don't have the authority to pre-plan for that situation, so I'm not going to concern myself with it. What I'm going to concern myself with is getting my kitchen clean, um, but I want to do so in a manner that doesn't kill the friendly bacteria that are in my kitchen. In other words, on our bodies, we have friendly bac bacteria and friendly microbes called our, our microbiome. Um, and it's, it's unwise to kill those friendly bacteria and microbes that are on our, on our body. Um, similarly, I feel it's unwise to kill the microbiome in your kitchen if you're healthy. If you're healthy, the things that are living on your countertops are probably doing a fantastic job of killing the, the nasty things that get on your countertops. Um, if you should get sick, that's a good time to kill what's on your countertops. Um, and my first line of defense to kill them would be something that has well, in general, my first line of defense to kill unfriendly bacteria is, is chlorine bleach. Um, sodium hypochloride, I think it's called. Um, I should be able to tell from looking at one of these. Yes, it looks like it's either sodium, maybe this one's bigger. You know, I can't tell if it's hypochlorite or hypochlorite, but um, either way, um, it's bleach. All, all three of these things it says bleach, bleach, and obviously this is bleach. Um, 
if I continue to, if, if I get sick and the bleach doesn't work, then I've also got this line of defense, which kills a whole lot of bad stuff um, um, very effectively, but it does so without bleach. It does so in a different way, which means if the bleach wasn't effective enough against in other words, if I don't recover quickly from when I do get sick, um, then I, I may go through the apartment cleaning with this stuff instead of the bleach. But for now, um, I'm going to stick with what I've got until I get sick. Once I get sick, then I will move on to the bleach. And if I don't recover quickly while using the bleach, then I will move into the other highly effective um, um, chemical treatments to clean my apartment. Um, but right now I'm still healthy, so I really don't want to clean, I really don't want to kill all the frank friendly bacteria that are on my countertops. And there are a lot of frank friendly bacteria on these countertops, which are doing an excellent job of keeping bad microbes off of my countertops. In other words, what's already populating my, my countertops um, is eating anything bad. And the proof that I have of that, or what suggests that this is true, is the fact that I've gone roughly two decades without being sick enough to need to call into work. So I really don't want to kill what's already flourishing on my countertops, just like I don't want to kill what's flourishing on my skin, because what's flourishing on my skin is keeping me very well protected against the nasty things that are making other people sick. I think that's a, that's a fairly good explanation of what I'm doing. So, let me in introduce you to the chemicals that I usually use. The BioGreen Clean. Um, BioGreen Clean is is the chemical that I order in a gallon quantity. Um, it's a concentrate. And then I put uh, this one, this bottle is for full strength. So from this bottle, I pour it directly into the uh, spray bottle there. Whereas this one is a mixture of seven parts water, one part bio green clean. Now, this stuff is pretty expensive. This is like a $90 bottle. So it's, it's very helpful to be able to mix it down to a rate of seven parts water, one part bio green clean concentrate. Um, but it's a mild cleaner. It doesn't, it's, its intent is to, much like soap, wash away the bad microbes. Um, and I'm sure a lot of good microbes also get washed away, but they don't die. They don't get killed. They get washed away. And the ones that stay on your body, when, when you're using soap, the microbes that stay on your body, if you're not getting sick, are almost certainly good microbes for you. When you're using BioGreen Clean, when you're cleaning your countertops, the microbes that get left on your countertops that don't wash away, if you're not getting sick, are probably good microbes. Um, now, in between here and here, I do have two things that I'm doing a little bit different because of the um, um, coronavirus. One, I'm taking this soap to the places where I work, so that when I wash my hands at the places that I work, I'm using a soap that doesn't irritate my hands. Um, so that I can wash very thoroughly um, any germs that are on my hands down the drain. Also, when I get home, something that I'm doing differently is like when I get home from the retail store, I'm taking a shower like within the first hour and a half that I arrive at home to wash away any of the virus that might be, um, that might have gotten on me while I was at the retail store. So because I'm putting the virus into my bathtub, I've already moved towards using bleach in my bathtub. 
whereas ordinarily in my bathtub I would be using the Bio Green Clean. The bathtub is the one place that I would expect that the coronavirus is probably going to populate first, so I'm using my first line of defense in that bathtub now. Instead of the Bio Green Clean, I've moved on to Lysol mold and mildew foamer with bleach. So again, bleach is my first line is my first line of defense against the coronavirus. Um, all three of these products have bleach. We got the Lysol bleach multi-purpose cleaner, which I haven't started using yet. Um, but if if I should start get sick, that's when I'll start cleaning my countertops with this bleach product. Um, this bleach product, Clorox Cleanup Cleaner Plus Bleach, this I use when I go to the laundromat to clean up the tables where I'm folding my um, clothes. In other words, I don't want to get um, any virus or bacteria from um, that somebody might have left behind on the big tables where we fold up our clothes and sort our towels and, and that kind of stuff. So I use this to clean up that table before I put my clean laundry onto those tables. And then ordinarily when I do my laundry, um, I'm using Clorox bleach to help disinfect that laundry um, from anything that I might have picked up from wherever I'm wherever my daily life takes me. So again, uh, in general, when there's no health concerns, Bio Green Clean, a mild detergent, in other words, a mild cleaner, is, is, what, I would rec is what I use. Um, two decades, I don't believe I've ever missed a day of work in those two decades due to illness. And that's because I'm, I'm doing what I can to protect those microbes which are favorable for me. The frank-friendly microbes, I don't want to kill them unless I have to. If I get sick, there will be some really, if I get sick with this coronavirus, there will be some really nasty germs on these countertops. That's when I'm going to move to the bleach. Because I feel that I'm probably already sending coronavirus microbes into my bathtub, I'm already using this bleach cleaner in my bathtub. Um, but then if this fails, my backup, if this doesn't help me get healthy very quickly, if these bleach products, and they should, I expect that they would help me get recover from the coronavirus quickly, which again, I don't I haven't contracted the coronavirus yet, but because I work in retail, it's very likely that I will. And because the retail store that I work in sells groceries, it's very unlikely to close, which means I will be subjected to a whole lot of people, um, some of whom will probably have the coronavirus and not know it yet because of the incubation period. And um, if I don't recover quickly while using these, then I'll go through my apartment a second time using this. And what I've got here, now these, these, all of these chemicals kill in a very similar manner to one another, they, but they do so in a manner that's very different from the bleach product. Um, and so they use primarily things like dimethyl, benzyl, ammonium chloride, ethyl benzyl ammonium chloride, and N-alkyl, N -alkyl. Um, but they all have very similar chemical makeups. Um, so this I'm just going to, I'll just set it way out of my way right now. won't even be using the products that are in that box unless I get sick with the coronavirus and these chemicals don't help me recover very quickly. I expect that these will help me recover very quickly and that I won't even need to move on to what's in that box over there. Um, 
So let's see how much time is left. My camera shuts off after 20 minutes. I'll move these back to where I would normally keep them. Time for me to move on to using the Bio Green Clean to clean up. First thing I'm going to clean up is going to be my sink, kitchen sink. And this one usually goes down under the sink. This one usually sits on the countertop right about there. And this one usually sits right about there. All right. Um, let's do this thing. Little wire scrubber. And again, because I believe that the microbiome in my kitchen, like the microbiome on my skin, has been helping to keep me very healthy, I don't want to kill the microbiome that's in my kitchen. So instead of using any of the harsh chemicals that you saw to clean my kitchen, Instead, I'll be using the Bio Green Clean, or I should say just a mild detergent. You know, you don't have to buy Bio Green Clean in order to use something that's mild. You can just use a mild soap or a mild detergent to, to get the same effect. Of allowing the friendly bacteria that are in your kitchen to thrive. Okay, so now I'll spray down the sink. Now that I've gotten a lot of the big junk out of the way. And I'm spraying it down with the 7 to 1 mix. In other words, just a mild detergent. Um, a mild soap. Visit this with the wire scrubby. Now I can use, let's 
see how much time we have.